So before CAD data that comes out later this afternoon, we can assess the current market standing for various CAD pairs. Um, trading CAD CPI uh, needs to be done usually in a specific way. Uh, don't forget, we'll be teaching it live um, on Zoom as we do every single day in our live academy. Um, and if this helps, don't forget to uh, comment underneath. Um, so let's go ahead. Well, we've seen a acceleration in the, or an uptick if you like, in the value of the euro against the CAD over the longer term. Um, or mostly since February this year. So it's been a good four months, four and a half months or so of consistent up move. Um, even before that, on the longer term scale, okay, you have actually, you know, technically been coming up um, since this point here, I would say around 20, uh, 28th of September, 2023. But looking in the nearest terms, we can see really that the, um, the weakness the CAD has seen um, via their, their quicker easing, if you like, has what has sustained, has been what sustained this move up um, in its entirety. Now, as of late, okay, you've seen euros really, really fall um, on further dovish uh, rhetoric via the ECB and a more confident outlook. First, you had Canada, okay, they brought you all the way up um, and they started easing reasonably quickly. That's why you saw a value of 1458. Uh, sorry, 149. And the EuroCAD particularly is just ranging now um, as time goes on. Um, you could probably draw this a little bit better if a computer had done it, but more or less it will look something like that in parallel format. Okay, so this upwards trajectory and this range, if you like, <laughs> has been relatively even. It's only gently been an uptick um, because there is only a gentle difference between um, these two uh, major economies in terms of their state of um, monetary policy or their confidence uh, overall. Um, <clears throat> that's why it's fairly flat as an uptrend. Now, personally, for me, I would prefer it long at this point. Okay, and I do currently have long holdings. And it's because, like I said, we're still trending up. If you've seen over this course of um, history, okay, if you look at price, you can see consistently you hit the upside trend line and you've continued. And it's not particularly the case, you know, entirely that, um, <clears throat> you know, there is a massive reason to short the euro compared to the CAD because traders already, you know, as you can see over the long term, have preferred the CAD weaker. OK, and they're both, you know, sort of unwinding now ahead of the US and other places like, uh, you know, Great Britain. So if you look at the weekly, you can see that reflected. Um, price has just been sustained to the upside. So there isn't really any reason for the, um, you know, the CAD to take enormous strength and just absolutely dump um, the euro down here. Now, that could be the case if CPI data comes out and supports an even more uh, dovish case for Canada, or they're even more happy with the unwinding um, of, of the you know, the, the more or less the, the um, cost of living crisis somewhat, although it still does exist and there, a lot of people are still suffering the consequences of that. Um, <clears throat> I'm not entirely keen on this early push, however. So you could reduce your size if you are long. It doesn't look massively appetizing, um, but by the same token, I mean, yesterday you didn't have any significant market news to move things anyway. So I'm not entirely surprised that your earliest level of resistance got hit and then you bounced away immediately. And that's why you find yourself down here again. Okay, so my take really is that it's a tentative um, long side entry. And really what you're trying to do is just track the overall sentiment bias and also the technical bias, okay? So it's fundamental bias and technical bias. We know there's not a massive outlier between these two um, central banks. And we know that because the trajectory we've seen is fairly flat to the upside. It's not very rash. Um, it sticks within a reasonable range, okay, like this. Um, you know, there's no, there's no massive drop out like that. And there's no enormous push up like that. There really isn't. And I know that because if I draw a trend line, it's flat like this, okay? So really, we're looking for swing trades with reasonable value, at least to the midpoint of this channel, I would say. I don't know if you can get a, um, would this work? Maybe, yeah, that'll do. It would be the midpoint of the channel, at least, or half the value of this. Um, 
so I still, you know, I still like it long because I'm looking essentially for something like this. But the level decay is not really that that great. However, having said that, if you look at the previous times like this, that was level decay. That had a little bit of level decay. That had level decay. Um, and when I say level decay, I, don't, I mean it's not pushing up immediately. Okay, it looks a bit like this. It's taking time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's why I like it long. Um, if it was the case that there was a big big sentiment bias for euro shorts now okay which there isn't really there isn't a massive case for it um compared to canada at least then i would probably hold off my longs okay but that's not happening at the moment um, and that's why you're seeing an uptrend if you do break lower let's use a ray again okay if you do break lower then i would then look for longs lower down at key long zones i'm not interested in shorting this until you really get much higher up. Um, if you look at something like the pound CAD, conversely, um, where are we? Pound CAD, pound CAD, there we are. What you've seen is a rapid fall. Okay, so you had this massive strength up. The price went up, 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 up for a consecutive period, all the way from uh, 169 roughly to 176. Okay, 700 pips or so. And then you have this big drop. Okay. You're not seeing again a massive push to the upside. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if you get more or less slightly up here. Now, the reason why is because the state of the Bank of England is different to the state of the ECB. Okay, they're completely different bodies. Um, but the the, rem the remaining factor between the two, obviously, is the CAD and the Bank of Canada. Um so if you do see something like this, I mean, I wouldn't mind reshorting, perhaps. Um, but further long entries, definitely. If I'm, you know, if I'm not reshorting on a push up, I would much prefer it long somewhere down here, okay? Because you've got so many more uh, key price action levels. You've got key moving averages like this green one here. You can see by 100, the value for entries long is so much better, okay? You can see that on a fib scale because that comes about 61.8 all right so that's my preferred long zone again if you look at the longer term trajectory you can see quite clearly okay you've again got that tentative uptrend i mean as of very late it's not tentative it's very sharp um but you know if you look over the long term period like i said it's like that okay it's it's much more flat it's just in the latest times, because of the way the pound is, you've seen this. Um, <clears throat> so anything higher, I like it short. Anything lower, I like it long. And we could find the CAD news really pushes us either way. Um, might take us down here, and then ultimately, perhaps down here. Uh, that would require a weaker pound and a stronger CAD. A stronger CAD will probably come from stickier inflation um, and, and a longer period of uh, rates. If you look at the um, dollar CAD, okay, uh, at this point, it's existed within this range I've drawn here, okay, which you can see. So we'll go on the weekly for this and we'll reset again. So you can see how you've gone sideways for a very long time. Up here, I like it short and down there, I like it long. And again, it, it's similar to the Euro CAD. We've seen it long there already so many times. It, you know, it's a, it's a demand zone for traders. Um, or essentially where there's probability for long side entries to, um, to rise quickly, okay? So that would require, obviously, a weakening of the US dollar, strengthening in the CAD. Again, like I said, that would come in the same format where there was a, um, a reason to buy the CAD, essentially, which would only come off more uh, sticky inflation and things like that. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, that's, that's where it would be overall. Um, at this point, in the very, very near term, this is reflecting what you've seen elsewhere. Although if you look at the pound CAD, it's up lately and um, the dollar CAD is down. If you look at the euro CAD, it's much further down than, than you've got the dollar CAD. Again, because it's just reflecting different economies. You've got to understand that not everywhere is the same. So that's a good run over there. If you need any help, then let me know. And of course, if you want to learn to trade live on Zoom every single day, go underneath this video and we'll show you how. See you in the next one.